Team 12, um, the topic that we were looking at this week was the representation of the geometry of things such as the riverbed and the floodplain in different hydraulic models. So that includes 1D, 1D, 2D, and 2D structured and unstructured, as well as the associated uncertainties. This is what we're going to cover in the presentation. Uh, so first we're going to introduce the hydraulic models and how they represent and what is meant by geometry and then we're going to talk about this in the context of 1D models and HEPRAS, then 1D, 2D models and then 2D models in the context of hydro. Then we're going to talk about the associated uncertainties and then make our conclusions. So first of all, river geometry is a variation of channel characteristics in cross-section and downstream in relation to variations in discharge and the subsequent changes in associated processes such as erosion with the biggest changes during high flow events. For the cross-sectional profile, this relates to things such as width and depth, and for the long profile, um, bed slope. Floodplain geometry can be defined as the variation of floodplain characteristics such as width and elevation, primarily in response to patterns of previous erosion and deposition during overland flow. For the low bar, the um, floodplain width and the width of a river vary um, along the catchment. Um, 1D and 2D, 2D hydraulic models are based on these equations, which centre on the continuity equation and the momentum equation. Some of the assumptions of a 1D model include flow is one dimensional, which means that the velocity is average for the cross section in the x direction and that the water level is horizontal and uniform at each, at each cross-section. For a 2D model, flow is two-dimensional, so velocity is average for the cross-section in the x and y directions. Water level can vary across each cross-section. Possible methods of solving these equations include the finite difference, finite volume, and finite element methods. We chose to look at the impacts of different space discretization structures on the models. Um, so for our 1D model HEPRAS, this was the assessment of different cross sections, and for our 2D model IVA, this was the assessment of mesh, mesh structure. When I'm talking about the 1D hydraulic model, we use the HEPRAS to simulate our 1D hydraulic model. In this case, like uh, the geometry that has been represented in 1D is mainly by the cross sections and which is also sometimes extended over the lateral floodplains. As you can see from the figures, the blue line represents the main river channel and the horizontal black lines are represented as the cross sections and the geometry between each cross section, series of cross sections, has been interpolated and we also are taking into account floodplains as it was our objective. So basically, the input uh, data and the model setup that we used in Hagrid's uh, was mainly the geometry which we got from the ArcGIS processing with the HEC-GIS tool that used the GM 5 meter resolution data. And then from that one we got the uh, channel and floodplain geometry in, as a series of cross-sectional uh, cross-sections where we have, we have taken into account interval and also about the extent, like the width of the cross-sections. And then finally we are also putting a uh, manx coefficient in left bank, main channel and the right bank. And in the case of boundary condition, uh, we mainly input the uh, flow hydrograph in the upstream ridge that was obtained from the previous last week hydrological modeling that we did. And for the normal depth uh, in the downstream ridge, we used normal depth uh, as a geometrical slope. We put the data of geometrical slope in the downstream ridge. And for the simulation, we ran the unsteady flow uh, analysis and the runtime was for three days. So now, like, uh, because our main objective of our topic was to how better to represent the geometry in the hydraulic model, so I basically did four we basically did four uh, scenarios where we took into account cross section level of about 200 about 200 meter width, a narrower representation of the floodplains, like around roughly one kilometers. Uh, in the downstream ridge in this case. So as you can see from the uh, <coughs> figures from the right side, uh, that the results were not that uh, good. It's, it was, uh, there were a lot of inconsistencies in the result. And the model was, uh, seems to be unstable on the upstream ridge. 
uh, and there was a full presentation of the observed events of flooding in the downstream part of the river bar. So this is mainly because the, the all cross sections, so the one that we took uh, was not giving us the actual representation of the geometry. Uh, the GM file uh, was poorly represented, and the problem was that uh, we are also we were also losing water in the lateral directions because we only took into account narrower flood plains. So runoff, uh, the inflow runoff that was coming from the upstream was losing. We are losing water from the sideways, so the water was not able to reach downstream. Hence, we are not getting the appropriate representation in this case. So then we moved on to the next step, where we narrowed the cross section width intervals. We took into account roughly 100 meters, and with the, the, with the, uh, with the same narrow representation, here you see that there, is, there was the same repetition of the result. We got the consistency in the result. The model seems to be more unstable uh, in the upstream ridge as well, and there was poor representation of the reality, real situation that was strictly observed in the downstream case. Then we did another scenario where we increased the interval by, by 100 meters, roughly 100 meters. Now we, are taking, we took a, a wider representation of the floodplains. In this case, we took about four kilometers of uh, extension in order to view our result. As you can see from the figures, uh, we uh, see that there was less inconsistency in the result that we obtained. And the world seems to be a little bit stable. Uh, and we were also will be able to get good representation. But uh, it was not so inaccurate results that we wanted to obtain from this scenario. Then the last scenario that we worked on was uh, we did uh, the same uh, interval, we took the uh, interval, like decreased the interval, uh, cross section interval, and we took a uh, wider representation of the block claim. In this uh, one, you, as you can see, the, there was less inconsistency in the result. The model seems to be more stable in this, uh, in this scenario, and there was quite good representation of the reality that we wanted to uh, solve by from our modern result. So, as you can see, that this was a uh, final plot, profile plot that we got. And you can see they were like these were the bears, the, and you can see the water level was too high. There was more inconsistency in the upstream part, and we we think that there was a lot of uncertainties associated with that one, as we you know, as we uh, it was that we, it was poor representation of the cross sections that we obtained from the RGIS from the GEM, and, uh, and the input data were also like a lot of approximations were done in order to like uh, we, there was an uh, approximation done for water structure for the parameters that we used and also for the boundary conditions so there were a lot of assumptions that's why as, as, a, as a result we see there are a lot of uncertainties associated with what we were doing in our case
and we uh, have simulated models of all different mesh configurations, 100 element size using an unstructured and a structured mesh, simulation with mesh oriented for the border between the river and the embankment near the airport, mix of 10, 20, 50 meter uh, resolution for unstructured mesh, mesh. The purpose is to assess the impact of different representation of geometry through different mesh structures. These are two pictures of 100 element size uh, triangle for uh, unstructured mesh and the square for uh, structured mesh. These are the simulation results. Uh, we can see even at the same time step and with the same resolution uh, for, uh, for structured mesh, mesh there are more areas of plastic. simulation, uh, we used a different orientation for the mesh on the downstream part. We can see here on the left hand side that the triangle grid is aligned with the embankment and we wanted to test how would be the result if we have a different alignment of the, the mesh structure. So the right hand side you can see that the embankment line crosses through the triangle mesh. They both have the same uh, size of elements, 100 meters. And now you can see the results. They are uh, presented in the same instant, 11 o'clock. And we can see that they are quite similar, but at some points, we can see that the mesh oriented presented the area. This one, uh, this one delimited by the uh, yellow box as uh, flooded up with water and whereas the non-oriented didn't have water in this part. So the orientation of the mesh matters. For the fourth simulation we used a mix of 10, 20 and 50 meters element size and unstructured mesh. Uh, we chose the area of the airport as 10 uh, meters element size and 20 meters for the river. <coughs> so upstream we had 50 meters for the rivers, for the river 20 meters and urban area downstream 10 meters. Simulation of three and a half days, our discharging put upstream and the results in this gift are presented in hours. This is the same, same time step that we have the previous simulation. We can see that the area uh, of the airport for this mesh uh, size actually wasn't flooded at this instant. This is a comparison of the mesh structure. We have uh, up on the left hand side 100 meters size and structure, right hand side uh, up. 100 meter size structure and, and down right hand side we have the mixed structure. You can see that for the same time step, uh, time instant, 11 o'clock, for the better resol final resolution, actually it was not flooded, it was flooded a little bit before, a little bit after. Here are some velocity vectors around the Nice airport. We can see that also the mesh structure matters when representing the velocities. There's some difference on the, the unstructured and structured 100 meter size. And obviously for the mixed and 10 meters resolution, there was no velocity vectors at this instant. It's just uh, zoom of the two areas that I described before. You can see also that the amplitude of the velocity vectors is a little bit different. Uh, I will now uh, recap the different factors that might have brought differences during our simulation. Uh, first, the input data. Uh, we didn't have uh, intermediate hydrographs, so we have to calculate them using 
HMS, so there might be uncertainties involved in this. For the uh, hydrograph, we did have at the object, it was um, measured visually after the flood actually occurred based on the water level and then converted into discharges and rating curves. And often those rating curves are outdated or established for a bad river section that might not be the one that was in place during the flood. Then as we saw through the various examples, the calculation routines, the interpolation methods, and the strong assumption also have an impact. Um, we might also ask the question of what's happening if the bed is changing during the, the event itself. It's very hard to assess, but this also brings uncertainty. Of course, the best discretization, the shape of the cell and the orientation matters a lot. It's also difficult to estimate the roughness in, uh, via the friction coefficient in the model because it can vary very quickly from one point to its neighbor, especially in an urban area. Obviously, the DM resolution matters. Um, we saw last week that it was difficult to correctly assess the upstream part of the network, and now that we're studying the urban area, it's also difficult because on a, within a very short distance, you can have a high building and the street which is at a low level, and if you average the altitude over the cell, you will get something that is not representative of, of the area you're studying. And also, the date of acquisition is important. I remind you that we are working on the 1994 flood, and the DM we use is from 2009. If we just look at the three pictures, we, we can see that the riverbed has uh, changed quite a lot just in between the two bridges. And this goes without saying that new construction has been going on, and the uh, land use might have been uh, quite a lot different ever since. So that's, this is to be kept in mind when we perform the simulation. At the conclusion of our second week of work, the better representation of the reality in the 1D hydraulic model was obtained through the geometry with cross-section interval of 100 meters and wider flood plain of 3,000 meters. Obviously, a higher resolution of the DEM allows a better representation of the riverbed and of the flood plain geometry. Uh, the objective of the simulation will impact the choice of the DEM resolution and the, comput the computational and the mesh grid structure that we will be using. <coughs> However, um, the time to run the simulation uh, will be constrained by the choice of this DM as uh, it can be increased quite a lot. And uncertainty assessment provides a range of possible results that can be used for decision-making strategies as this is usually the ultimate goal of, of such studies. Those are the references we used this morning for our presentation. Uh, the technical report, the final one, as well as the team video can be found on our website. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for very much for the nice presentation. Is there any comments, feedback? Yes, Kostya. No, Kostya Selek. Thank you very much for the nice presentation. Just um, one comment. You mentioned about extension of perceptions, and you did lots of work on this. But there may be other methods in 1D to try to represent the, um, <coughs> the flat plane. I'm not sure if these are actually workable for the Rivera, but uh, you could have mentioned them, like representing them via uh, reservoir, uh, reservoirs, uh, like representing the flat plane by reservoirs for the US circuits and intersections. Um, so I think it's just good to mention you know, other items, but probably that wouldn't be workable. It would be nice to, to, to have a that comment. And uh, you mentioned that there is some uncertainty in the hydrograph. Uh, so, what exactly these uncertainties are? Uh, as far as I know, there can be two types of uncertainties in the hydrograph. So you just keep through saying that there are uncertainties that didn't go further. So usually these are uncertainties in the de definition of the time to peak and also the magnitude of the peak. So it would be really nice if you mention this. Yeah. So these are really comments. But yeah. Thank you very much. OK. Um, Stefan Ines from Brussels University. Thank you for the nice presentation and for the uh, many scenarios that you did, which uh, uh, I appreciate. If you go back uh, to slide number 27, where you show the difference between the, um, uh, the um, 29, sorry, the difference between the uh, orientation of the mesh size. Uh, the next one, 29, I think. Um, the 
conclusion is that there is, there is some difference to be observed here. Suppose that the mesh resolution here would be 10 meters instead of 100 meters. Would you expect also a different result uh, for the two different mesh orientations? I, I think it will be really hard to see because we just changed this area which is uh, delimited in red. Uh, so no, I think we wouldn't see any difference. Thank you. Uh, so uh, thank you for a very nice presentation. It was very interesting. Uh, I have a very quick uh, comment from on this slide. So I think if you have a fine grid, uh, it's, uh, the question is: Is your grid capturing uh, structures which uh, appears uh, in the air or not? So you might have the problem with orientation. You might not have the problem with orientation, depending on uh, on lab, basically. When, when you read. And then I have a little question concerning uh, the simulation time. How long does it took to, to run uh, the model with uh, 10 meters grid? It took around 10 hours. So we decided to show the, in these size elements this comparison of the orientation because we wouldn't have time to show the final grid, but that would be the next step. Okay, thank you. Can you go to slide number 18, please? Can you explain uh, again the problem with your ECOAS model? Explain? Yeah, what, what is... Uh, you talk about uh, instabilities. Yeah, the instabilities that you can see from the large tube form. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, because uh, we didn't take into account the the grid took into account smaller but narrower flood plains. So I thought that we thought that uh, the water, the running, the coming in flow water was losing naturally in the flood plains. So the water was not going downstream, the flooded water was not going on downstream. So all the waters were uh, more or less uh, uh, like more or less uh, only storing in the upstream part but it was not going in downstream. Okay, now is so look, look at it, your longitudinal profile. What do you have uh, upstream? If you have a weir. You have a weir, yeah. It's a uh, they store a lot of water. So maybe the water condition is not at the good place. You should have uh, taken a longer river or to cut after. You are too close to the weir. Check 
what would have been the good strategy for checking the, how the topography is represented within the real world? Uh, we could maybe check a, a finer resolution of the EM or other data, topography data. Yeah. Well, my question was which points could be references for, for checking the user profile? We, we could check the points where we have the variation, for example, the wires. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The priority is to validate the DM on the crest of the wires. Okay. So in order to be sure that you are not, for example, one or two meters above, that may in fact generate the fact that you have running. And I think this is basically what you have into two course resolution when you are generating these things. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. So let's move to the team number eight, please. Talk about 1D modeling and 2D modeling for wares and bridges, and then we conclude. So, first, our objectives for this week was to determine how can wares and bridges be represented in 1D and 2D hydraulic models, and which data is needed uh, to describe these structures and how does it need to be treated. So, wares are hydraulic structures built transversal to the main flow direction. These structures are mainly used for the management of water level, water level. They help to stabilize the channel and control the erosion by reducing and regulating the velocities and diminishing the water surface slopes. The wells also have negative impacts, and all the impacts of the wells are summarized in the, in the table you can see with the hydromorphodynamic effects, the biotic effect, and the side effects for the upstream bridge. So in the little scheme, you can see the influence of the wares on the flow. So uh, upstream of the wear, we have a fluvial regime or subcritical. And downstream, we have a torrential regime or supercritical regime. For the bridge, there are also so structures which affect on the hydraulic regime. Uh, is linked to its support or the pillars that are located in the flow section and act as a break for the flow and it results to an increase in the water levels upstream and downstream. These variations in water levels are even more important that the supports are mainly numerous and have, they don't have hydrodynamic shapes. And to appreciate the impact, we have to model in taking into account the geometry of the structures. So for 1D approach, uh, the 1D approach is based on the 1D Semenon equation, which is a combination of continuity equation and momentum equation. Uh, to model, we make basic assumptions, uh, like the flow is one-dimensional, Streamline curvature is small, bottom slope of the channel is also small. The Manning equation is used to describe resistant effects and the field is incompressible. Uh, the 1D hydraulic modeling remains a schematization of the real hydraulic function about the water course. And to model in 1D, we choose to use the ECRA software, which use the following wear formula. 
uh, with the C coefficient, which is the wear coefficient, and which depends on the wear type. So in, in this case, we will model the wear number 5. So to make a wear in a, in a head patch, uh, if we have regular we can just uh, model the setup with the we set up the boundary condition and the time, the time length that we need to use the simulation. But if we don't have the geometry, you can using the DEF and generate the high QRS in the in the RGS to get the cross section. So now we are talking about the modeling wheels in the 1D for the, for the high press. So in the high press, like we. For the model, the structure we need to open the cross section, section, cross section, and then we need to input the inline structure, and you can put the station that we want to put in the for the wheel, and then the dimension of the wheel you can put in the wheel embankment, and this is the picture of the how it looks. And for the number one, it's like the distance of the wheel to the upstream <coughs> cross section. And number two is the width of the wheel. And number three and four is the the coordinate of the wheel. And number five and six is the embankment of the wheel. So to model the wheel number five, we we using the data from the wheel number six with the with the data from the Excel that we are looking like this one, we we just want to know the the length of the embankment with this picture. So this is how it looks when we put the all of the wheel in the all of the data that we have to the cross section and in the head press and this is how it looks in the in the head press and this is how it looks in the 3D 3D view in the head press. So for the bridge, we choose to model the Lamanda bridge in Sanabotra. So how to model bridge? So we we model the bridge with the Equas software as well. So the Equas program has the ability uh, to compute by either the energy equation or by using separate hydraulic equation for pressure and wear flow. In our case, we choose to use the energy equation with the standard method because it applies the same way for the high flow and the low flow. So the low flow is when the water is below the bridge and the high flow is when it's above the bridge. So the energy-based uh, method requires mining values for friction losses and contraction and expansion coefficient for the transition losses. And this coefficient can be found in the ECRAS manual. The energy-based method treats the bridge in the same manner as natural river cross-section except the area of the bridge below the water surface is subtracted from the total area and the weighted perimeter is increased where the water is in contact with the bridge structure. Now for the modeling of the bridge, it's, it's still the same with the uh, out when we are modeling the wheel. The difference is that we need to choose the bridge instead of the wheel. Now to add the wheel, so we need to <coughs> open the cross section again, and then we we press the bridge and the pull form, and it will show you the like you need to put the station that you want. Where is it? And then you put the tape, uh, you press the tape and roadway to make the bridge, just the upper one. So it's still same in the it's still same like in the wheel before, but the difference is like. In, uh, for the data for the coordinate, like we need to put the high coordinate is the highest point of the bridge, and uh, the the low coordinate for the low the low of the bridge. And in the Lamanda bridge, there are three pier, so we we can add the pier with the in in the. Uh, a bridge and a culvert section two, and this is the editor of the pier. So we need the data of the elevation and the pier width. 
So to put the model, it, you need to remember that the elevation needs to be from the lowest to the highest from the pair width. So if, if you didn't do that, so the model will not work. In. So after that, we put the, all of the all of the dimension that we got from the Google Earth. Like we just measure the data from the Google Earth to to know what is the length and the width of the of the bridge. And this is how it looks in the 3D view in the headcast. So to model our waves in 2D, we chose to use Isla. And the weir is basically represented using the DEM, so therefore we need to be um, aware of possible errors in the DEM. So the general steps you can see here to create a domain, which we did in ArcGIS, and um, put it into either assigning the input parameters, <coughs> assigning the boundary initial conditions, um, creating a mesh, which we chose, an um, unstructured, unstructured mesh, and then um, assigning the automation data to the mesh, which we need the 2009 DEM. Um, so here you can see um, the different mining coefficients that we assign depending on the land use. Um, the most important um, for modeling the weir is obviously in the riverbed. Um, so we assigned a 0.025 um, mining value for that. Um, and also we um, <coughs> use different mesh sizes. And uh, the weir was the most important thing we were looking at here, so we um, had five meter resolution here um, to just show the variation here. And so we model weir five the same as for the one meter resolution, um, and this was based on the 2009 data. Um, um, all you can see it is quite well represented here. Um, the and it is um, all measurements show between like 4.5 and 5.5, which is quite similar to the measurements in reality, which is 5 meters. And as I said before, I think we do need to take into account the uncertainty in the DEM, um, because we know that DEM is just, just measuring the water surface instead of the child morphology. So this really should be corrected. We didn't really have time to do this. Um, so the most important part would be to correct the upstream. Uh, this is like the water deeper on the upside of the up, upstream side of the weir. Um, but we didn't have like up to date data on like the depth behind um, the weir, like if they had been involved by sediment accumulation. Um, so this like made it affect the hydrodynamics of the weir. Um, but the best thing to do would be to get some up-to-date measurements on actually like how much sediment is around the weir and then we would be able to measure it, like model it properly. Hi, so I will now comment on how we reach the model uh, with the Hebra 2D simulation. So our goal uh, is to include the bridge in uh, the simulation. So in the original DEM, bridges were represented as a wall creating problem due to the interaction between the flow and hydraulic structures. But we know that uh, the flow could be to flow down, so we are working on the original DEM to change the elevation data in order to make uh, DEM without bridges to have more realistic simulation. So as we can see uh, in uh, these pictures, the bridge um, on the uncorrected DEM deflects the river flow, so we have to correct it. Uh, to do that, we use arches and we make polygon and polygon on bridges. Uh, when we create the polygon, we have to put many different points. Um, for each point, we inform an elevation value as the elevation of the closer point of the river. Uh, when the polygons are finished, we have to change the feature type as triangulated irregular network, and then we change it as a raster. Finally, we replace this part with the original DEM to get a final DEM without uh, bridges. Um, for the result, if we want to simulate a flow map, we have to be careful about all the bridges of the area, and not just for the bridges uh, of the river, but 
uh, also the ones which are located in the city. Uh, so you can see in this picture how we can present it in Eber now. Uh, we create an unstructured mesh uh, resolution of 5 meters around the bridge. Uh, we assign to the mesh the elevation data according to uh, the corrected DEM. Uh, we have some uncertainty in our model setup. Uh, we think that the most important uncertainty uh, comes from the impact of bridge pillars uh, on flow dynamics, which are not taken into account. The model cannot represent scenario where, we, where the bridge is over top uh, also. And we think that the final TM have a lack of precision due to the interpolation on RGs. Uh, we can have a step of velocity or, uh, or the water level in uh, the river in our results, in the simulation results. So uh, this week we have worked about how to properly model hydraulic structures uh, with the wells and bridges in 1D and 2D hydraulic models. Um, for the hydraulic structures in 1D models, wells and bridges can be modeled using different empirical formulas in 1D hydraulic models. The input of the dimensions has to be accurate to optimize the model. And for the hydraulic structures in 2D models, wells and bridges are represented by the geometry of the mesh and the elevation data is, 2D, uh, is data in 2D modeling. The elevation data has to be carefully assessed uh, and corrected in order to minimize uncertainty. So you can see our references and thank you for your attention. We have time for quick questions. Yes, comments. Just uh, one comment. Uh, page six for the web formula.
of a lot of things, but one the cause it to be a pretty hydraulic model in terms of computational time and rules of quality. And this is our content, includes six parts from project area to during, uh, the our main part is for 1D, code 2D, and 2D model. And this is our project area, and our study domain is low up, and it's about 22 kilometers from the number 16 square to the real mass, and slope is uh, 0 0.5 meters. And this is his, uh, its width. And our methodology is from Pro pro processing from UGs to make our map and to understand um, uh, and our topic is uh, use hydraulic model to understand one D model, for the two D, two D model, and one D two D model. And this is our topic of this week. Okay, so before we start, uh, just quick introduction to when we might use 1D, 2D, or 3D models. So 1D models are mainly used um, for making dams and even river. When we are dealing with a flood plain, with the main channel and flood plain, it might be better to deal with the 2D models. And when we are close to the ocean, uh, in the area or sorry, close to bridges, uh, it might be better to use 3D model. Uh, and it, concerning 3D models, we will not talk about them later, it's just, just informative. So for the 1D model, it is represented by a uh, main channel and uh, the profile representing the flow at the uh, floating, so the flow plane. <coughs> and the advantages of the 1D models are a fast computational time, they do not require many data except for cross-section, and they need a uh, few engineering groups. Um, these advantages of one model uh, are many that they can produce brilliant flood map uh, considering buildings and various obstacles. Um, regarding the equations used in the model, um, we use the shallow water equations or shallow equations. Uh, the first one is the uh, momentum conservation, and the second one is the uh, conservation of mass. And in 1D model, uh, velocity is a range <laughs> along the profile. And the hypothesis of 1D model is that the fluid velocity is perpendicular to the cross section, and the water level is the same for the cross section. And now we move to the question. Thank you, Nixon. Uh, talking about the Basically, the basic theory behind it is to be to make the channel as a multi flow and um, the flood plain as a storage area or main channels. And these will be linked by layers or slopes. <coughs> really. uh, and there is one uh, equation. Uh, this is one of the weird equations that I mentioned. Uh, I mentioned here where C D is the uh, discharge coefficient, B is the width of the weir, and H is the head of the weir. And uh, there's a small spelling mistake. So it's the X as a storage compartment, the flood plane acts as a storage compartment. And uh, the topology of the flood within the flood way is of uh, importance here. We need to have a detailed understanding of, um, of the flow. And here is a schematic of the quasi 2D. Uh, the figure on the left shows uh, uh, the real scenario. It's, uh, there are four compartments, A, B, C, and D, and in C, we can see that it has been um, detached from the river with a dike, and there is a connection uh, with A and C. So we have to uh, know the exact flow path uh, in the flood plains. So that's, uh, the, we can see that A and B is connected directly to the river, as in the real case scenario, and D is connected to the river, and A is connected to C. So these are the details that we need to understand while doing the quasi 2D. And the advantages is compared to the 2D models, uh, it has um, faster computational time and it does not require many data. Uh, but the disadvantage is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there is a lot of engineering work to, because we need to understand the, have a detailed understanding of the flood ways and because of which we need more time for pre-processing. 
So I'm going to talk about uh, two new models, advantages and uh, challenges. So first we have a uh, footprint extension. Um, we have special representation of depth and velocity as well. Uh, we get a better visual result. And uh, of course, uh, we have few engineering costs. And for disadvantages, um, <coughs> uh, of course, we have more computational time. And uh, the quality of the result depends on the DAM quality. Um, and we have another things to do is to to, to remove uh, structures that can be that can block water circulation. So for 2D model equation, we we have standard norm shallow water equation 2D, and uh, so we have mass equation and momentum equation. Um, we have some difference between uh, the 1D equation and 2D compared to what we have. Uh, what we have done before. And uh, to create uh, the 2D model, we have to generate a mesh. And as you can see on the right part, uh, we create a mesh uh, with the 30 meter resolution. This is the positive hydrograph that we use for our model. Uh, basically, this one is the event for 1994. Uh, so for one model we use HECRAS and we set up for unsteady flow and we set up all the structure, weirs and also bridges. And here is the result for development that we generated. As you could see that uh, in, the, in the upper part uh, there are some quite spread of uh, Flow in the flat plane, while in the middle, it's like almost no, no water in the flat plane. And in the downstream, we could see that uh, some parts are filled with water from flat plane. But unfortunately, uh, uh, for area at the airport that uh, in the event of 1994 was flooded, we uh, we uh, we don't put um, a lot of uh, cross-section or cross-section on that array. So for the simulation, it takes for one minute. Uh, in terms of uh, the quality of the flat map, it's quite poor. And uh, we, we have also a problem with uh, instab instability in the model, mostly for, uh, for STD. And as you can see, some discontinuity of the water uh, in the area that it, in the middle, like there is no, no connection between uh, the main river and the flat plane, but there is one other. This due to, due to the behavior of 1D uh, equation that used. The second one is quasi 2D model. We use across the game. And in this case, uh, the flat plane model as a storage. So usually it could be uh, represented as link uh, or storage or combined both of them. And in this case, we use only storage. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we could not get the result. Uh, we did like we tried our best uh, to put all the properties of this uh, connection and also the, the storage, but it takes time. It takes a lot of time. Uh, but luckily, the hack uh, they they uh, consider the flood. Uh, the the height and the coverage area, the flat depth and volume correlation. So we could get like quite close uh, correlation between height and the uh, the volume in the storage with the hack viewers instead of doing manually. For this uh, model, yeah, it takes a lot of uh, work for pre processing, mostly for connection for lateral connection and also uh, for lateral connection and uh, the storage. It's uh, well, but when it's set up, it's less computational time. And uh, in terms of the flat map, this is quite good for the area that is relatively flat and not so heterogeneous in terms of the uh, land use. 
since we are uh, interested in, in this uh, type of model of uh, one D um, main channel and flat plane correlation, so we use like uh, the couple of one D and two D that has quite similar behavior that they connected with the link in the lateral link uh, with the lateral link uh, to connect the the one D for channel from channel to the flat plane. So here we generate. Uh, the couple model with my flag combined with my clef and my 21 and the the flat map shows the, the flow dynamic and also flat extent within the flat plane although it, it's uh, quite same like uh, what it could be it take a long time for pre-processing pre -processing. and also we have uh, instability issue regarding the lateral so this is the real case that we got. Uh, this is the flat flat plane that is uh, generated not at the top, at the peak of the hydrograph due to the instability. Because I don't know why the the model suddenly error and fortunately we got some result. But I'm sure this one is not the one that is the big one. The simulation time for this uh, model it takes like 30 minutes. So I'm going to talk about 2D model results. So as you can see, uh, we we get water depth map and velocity map. So this screenshot has been seen during uh, the flood event, during the big flow, which has been recorded at 6 p.m. on uh, the November 1994. So as you can see on the screen, we have several areas where floating occurs, uh, like industrial area of Carlos, this airport, Cap uh, 3000, and uh, this part uh, at the left bank. For the simulation, uh, it takes uh, 40 minutes, so it, takes, it, took, it took less time. Um, concerning water depth map, um, it varies between uh, 1 meter and 5 meter, and the maximum has been reached uh, downstream. And for the velocity map, um, it varies between uh, 2 meter per second and 4 meter per second. Um, okay. So here is the summary for the model comparison. So it could be divided into three. The first is the data requirement and pre-processing needs. And <coughs> second, geometry setup. And the third is computation. In terms of the data requirement for pre-processing uh, needs, uh, all the model, 1D, uh, couple model, 1D, 2D, and also quasi 2D, 2D, all need protection. But in terms of the digital elevation model, uh, 1D, it doesn't, need that doesn't necessarily use uh, the digital application model, but with the topography, with only topography. Uh, for refer symmetry interpolation, uh, it's necessary for 2D. While well, for the geometry setup, uh, for the 1D, it's represented by the cross section, and 1D, 2D, uh, cross section and mass, but uh, for quasi 2D, is a cross section and uh, the, 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 the storage of the link in the flat plane. And for 2D, is mass. Setup times, it, it takes longer time for 1D, 2D um, couple and also for, for quasi 2D. <coughs> While the, the last time is R1D. Uh, Representation of a complex infrastructure is uh, more comfortable in 1D, so 1D related uh, model like uh, 1D couple and also Pacific is quite good in representation uh, in representation of the complex infrastructure. While for 2D, uh, you have to take more time uh, and take a look uh, really. Uh, and the mostly for the mass to really represent uh, mass size to, re to represent the, the structure. The representation of lateral inflow uh, is good for 1D, 
in the in the in the, in the river, but it's not that good in to be. For computation time, uh, of, of obviously for one D is the shortest, and two D and the other model take longer time. For stability, uh, one D is more stable. Uh, and 1D to D has the, the more instable problem compared to other one. For the source of instability, instability uh, for 1D is from the cross section placement, while for 1D to D uh, and quasi to D is lateral structure, and for 2D is for full momentum in river and bridges. Uh, for uh, modern utilization, To get a better result for uh, uh, for the maximum inunda inundated areas, uh, it's better to use 1D or 2D or 1D 2D models. And for uh, dynamics and velocities, important such as uh, hazard assessment, we we use uh, 2D or 1D 2D models. Uh, and uh, also, it depends on the structures. If we, have, uh, if, if we want to study a few or simple uh, structures, uh, such as uh, weirs, we use 1D, 1D, 2D, or 2D models. And if we have many, many or complex uh, structures, like uh, dams, gates, bridges, and uh, culverts, we use 1D or 1D, 2D models. Uh, for fluid plane characteristics, uh, uh, if we have a fluid, fluid plane behind, uh, fluid plane behind VB, we use 2D or 1D 2D models. And for V chain uh, terrain uh, channels, we use 1D or 2D. And uh, for simple and uh, rural areas, we use 1D, 2D or 1D 2D models. And for urban areas, we use 2D or 1D 2D. And for, uh, for, uh, to conclude, uh, we say that each hydraulic, uh, each hydraulic model has its own advantages and disadvantages, and its utilization depends on the purpose. And the uh, hydraulic model will be meaningless without knowledge of the model. Uh, and also, uh, 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 during the Water Europe project, we learned uh, the entire fluid processing from rainfall to resilience uh, using hydro hydrological and hydraulic modeling, and also we learn to deal with teamwork. Those are our references, and thank you for your attention. Thank you. We have time for questions. Kostya, yes. Can you log up? Can you log up? It works, it works. Oh, thank you, very nice presentation. Um, just have a question on the uh, page, something on page 19. Mm, uh, so, uh, in the right uh, bottom corner, you say something about instability, stability problems, and instability solved for the 2D model, and you mentioned power. So for the stability source for 2D models, right? Yes. Uh, it's uh, come from the uh, formula that they use uh, for momentum in the river and stru the structure. A comfort in 2D models, uh, I think uh, we have to treat as as two conditions. The first is uh, if it's not submerged, that it uh, treat as a open channel. But uh, if it's uh, submerged, it's supposed to be treated as uh, pipe. That's right. Uh, okay. Just to quote the end, I don't know how you're presenting, but I would expect it to be 
Thank you very much.